Hi, everybody, and welcome to TNM Coaching Unplugged. We're so grateful and happy to have you today with us because we have Ishmael Perez joining us. For the chat today, we're going to dive into the current affairs. We're going to look into what has been going on in our lives and ask a few questions and connect and share with everybody in our community. We're super grateful for you asking for Ishmael to come back on. And I would love to also announce that Ishmael has the new edition of his book published right now. So for the people who did not buy his book, please go ahead and find his, the new edition of his book. And which is enriched with one chapter, I suppose, right? Right, Ishmael has more content to it, and then you can enjoy this incredible body of work. So we're so grateful to have him with us today. So let's dive into it. Vivian, I'll pass it on to you, and welcome, Israel. Mm. Thank you, guys. Pleasure to be here. Okay, so we'll talk about the book later, because I know that there's a, a, a special way of getting it to make sure you get the new edition, but we'll do that at the end of the interview, Ishmael. What I can uh, do is I can yeah. give you guys the direct link for the second edition. Right. And then, you know, if you guys put in the description, if people click on the direct link that uh, they're going to have, it's going to go directly to the second edition. It, it's not just a new chapter that I added, guys. I completely restructured the whole book where it, it reads more uh, concise and more um, yeah. clearly. So. Yeah. 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 So it's really worth, it's really worth making sure that you, you get that edition. And of course it's called Our Cosmic Origins. So, oh, listen, let's be totally upfront and honest with everybody and say all three of us came to this call saying, what the hell is going on? Oh, my, you know, we got to hold on tight because it's crazy out there. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and you know what I would say? The, the way I was describing this yesterday to Zora was he's like, I have never, this is the weird paradox I live in, I've never been felt more certain that everything that we have been talking about sort of conceptually and academically for years now is actually happening for everything is all going to be all right and yet never have i felt have i been seen around me such madness and chaos and craziness telling me exactly the opposite so i live in this strange parallel universe is at the same time and that's exactly what's going on right now Vivian. Oh, is it Viviana? Vivian, Vivian, Vivian. I don't know. Um, there's a, an infinite number of parallel Earths and alternative universes that are coexisting right now. So in one timeline, there's going to be an apocalypse. There's going to be a third world war, a nuclear holocaust, uh, Project Blue Beam, end of the world scenario. And uh, the people that are vibrating in fear are, are, the, are the ones that are going to reap that. And then on another positive timeline or the opposite polar of that, is the uh, EBS, the down, you know, the uh, takedown of the cabal, the revelation of the truth of what's been going on, uh, bringing the power back to the people, revealing um, extraterrestrials, advanced technologies, free energy, all that restored back to the earth, med beds, everything like that. And then there's everything in between. So this is what I call the bifurcation of timelines. So depending on people's vibrations, they're either going to end up in one or the other. And there's no turning back. So for those that are fear that are feeding the fear mongering, unfortunately for you, because you are keeping your vibration low, you're losing the hope and faith, you are going to end up in the negative timeline because things are going to be getting crazy as things boil up to at one final climax. You know, uh, we are living in the book Revelation. You know, uh, I hate to quote the Bible. I'm not trying to be a religious figure here, but I but there is a lot of um, symbolic metaphor truths in that book, Revelation, regarding what is unfolding in these days. And so, on, uh, like I said, on one positive timeline, what we see is we see a final purging. We see a solar flash um, that is going to purge all wicked, wickedness, all evil, all negativity, AI, everything, and only leave the just, and that's what we call the new heaven on earth as we enter the new age or the age of Aquarius. And then again, the negative timeline is going to be apocalyptic. But the the rate of your vibration will determine in which one you end up with. End, I'm sorry. So yeah, this is, this is like, we still have a few, I think a month left before the bifurcation of time. I've always believed that the bifurcation of time was going to take place sometime before the summer, sometime in spring. So... Okay, well, astrology seems to match that. All the, all the sort of astrologers who I respect and listen to, um, 
seem to be saying the same thing, which is, and those who are channeling as well, they all see, you know, it's just like March is going to be like this chaotic stuff coming out. And that then this year is basically when, as you say, these revelations become clear. And it might not mean, mean that sort of new stuff is implemented, but it becomes clear what is leaving, I guess, what, what, is, what, is, what is going away and making room for what's new. So my question is, if we are experiencing this weird sort of literally existing in two parallel universes, I mean, I can see all that. And I can understand why people are afraid of it. And I can see that, you know, why people are terrified about the financial system and about World War Three happening and about nuclear holocaust and everything. It's like, it's not like I don't believe that that's there, but I don't feel that it's a part of me or a part of my life. And not that I think, you know, I'm different and I'm, it's not like that. It's just, I think... Yeah, I see it, and I understand it intellectually, but in my heart, it doesn't exist. That's because you're not a part of that timeline. Due to the rate of your vibration, Viviana, you're actually part of the positive timeline where none of that's going to happen. So it's not also it's not going to be part of my reality as well, and it's not going to be part of Zoran's reality. I guarantee you that, because you know we choose to not buy into the fear porn. We choose to keep our frequencies high. We choose to. Um, only put our focus and intent on building the new earth. And so everyone that is doing that, everyone that is putting their focus, intent, and attention on building the new earth will not experience any negative scenario. In fact, the portals for the new earth, which is known as the Terra Earth, because remember, we used to be in the Terra Earth during the days of Atlantis. So we've fallen from the Terra Earth, which consists of dimensions four, five, and six. So the portals of ascension are going to are actually reopening when this timeline split takes place and those that are vibrating in a high frequency are going to spontaneously enter the terra earth where there is no camp trails where there is no corruption there is no cabal in fact atlantis is still intact uh, lemuria never fell and the new terra earth you see the morphogenetic fields that held the new terra earth together have recently been uh repaired you know, so um, the Terra Earth is waiting. It's already there. It's already coexisting on a parallel reality. And when those portals open, which are known by many names, some people call them the portals of Amenti, the 12 Meridian Time Warps. There's 12 major stargates uh, in, in uh, about uh, 46 innumerable ones. When the 12 major stargates open, it's going to activate the ley lines of the Earth, the crystalline structure. And for those that are vibrating... Um, in a frequency of love, happiness, harmony, brotherhood, sisterhood, are going to have a free entry into the new earth. And then those that are not vibrating, those that are still clinging towards negativity, towards judgment, towards uh, believing in you know the mark of the beast, are going to unfortunately go into the negative earth, where you know it all becomes purged. Yeah, I just wonder when we're, we're going to be able to stop seeing it because actually it's quite. Um... It makes me sad. It makes me sad when I when I feel for a moment what they're feeling and that level of fear and horror of of what is apparently happening or could happen. It, it makes me so sad that I don't want to see it. That sounds selfish, but it's the truth. <laughs> you have right to choose. So so. Ishmael, when it comes to the preparation for, for ascension, because now it feels like that we're getting into it, we're all sensing it, we sense the quickening, the intensity is there. We can also sense that the bifurcation of the timeline is slowly and gently happening. So for people who are kind of fluctuating from one to another, meaning, you know, not being able to be 100% positive their life, holding the positive timeline, really believing in, in, in that ascension, what can we do at this juncture, and we are now recording in March 2023, to be able to ensure that we step into that timeline and step into the ascension in the most beautiful and natural way? The best way to um, help those people that are kind of in limbo, in between, fluctuating, like you said, my friend, is to uh, remind them, to remind them that um, 
their rate of vibration, their state of emotional, their, their emotional state of being, and where they choose to focus their attention uh, will ultimately determine in which earth they end up in. Um, I've always personally believed that um, the people that are generally good, the people that mean no harm, that are in somewhat service to others, mm -hmm. uh, despite of their of their fear, I've always believed that somehow they are going to make the ascension. You know, um, according to the Book of Revelation, you know, they it's believed and it's stated that during the days of Noah, the earth was cleansed by water. During the days of the Lord, which, which again, it's a metaphor describing the uh, activation of the Christ mind in millions of us, which is what's happening, right? All the light warriors and light workers are activating the Christ mind within themselves. Um, and it also, the day of the, of, of the Lord also has a lot to do with the solar flash, because the solar flash um, is the judging. It's, it's the day of judgment, of, of wickedness. It's, it's is the thing that's going to purge all that is evil, all that is not in harmony with with service to life and so i've always believed that um that this the second um i guess shift that is about to take place will be experienced by some sort of fire you know the bible calls it a fire but metaphorically speaking the fire is the photon bell to so the fire is the uh, solar flash which is going to burn off the entire system of the beast the you know the last of the residue of the cabal, the last of the residue of the AI behind it, and then of course any lurking negative regressives that are still hiding you know in the dumps. Um, I've always believed that sword flash was the day of is pretty much what the Bible calls the second coming, the day of judgment. Not necessarily the coming of a person from the sky, but it's going to be a two way process where the mind of Christ will be activated in millions of people. Uh, and then at the same time, the purging fire, which is the solar flash, will eliminate and uh, completely destroy off anything that is not in alignment with what's good. You know, so I've always believed that because that's what the Book of Revelation does. And the Book of Revelation does say that there is going to be two splitting Earths, the two uh, types of Earths. There's going to be the spiritual Earth, in which we humans are going to once again inherit our celestial bodies which is equivalent to what we call in metaphysical knowledge the light body which is in process of activating and then of course there's going to be the uh, other earth which is going to be the earth where um you know all the natural catastrophes the apocalyptic scenario is going to be experienced by those that don't make the shift into the spiritual earth so i've always believed that my friend Wonderful. And that's, that's really, really encouraging because now we understand how the process is going to happen. Right, Vivi? Back to you. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, we can't play with timelines anymore, can we either? I mean, when I say timelines, I mean in trying to say, well, it's going to happen in the spring or it's going to happen in the summer or it's going to happen in 2024 or 2028. It seems to me that it's fluid and it depends on a lot of variables. Is that right? Yes, you're absolutely right, you know, because of the fact that uh, there is a timeline we're taking place in the future between the advanced AI system and the, you know, um, humans, the, the angelic humans, right, the metahumans, the humans that did it organically, um, you know, things could shift. Everything's fluctuating right now. But what we do know is that due to this a uh, timeline war, we do win that war in the future. We do win that war in the future, and we secure the positive ascending timeline and we do save the organic way of life, not only here on the earth, but all throughout the entire universes. And, and what I mean by universes, I mean the entire omniverse, which consists of all the different multiple universes that exist within the organic timeline. And, and for people who are confused with the timeline chess game or the war, how, how do you understand this? You know, do you understand that people are literally traveling backwards and forwards in time and moving different pieces of chess? And when we say, for example, certain event is going to happen on 3rd of April, something happened in that game that something shifts and moves and then it goes further in our linear time. And the same thing will happen the other way around. Is that how you understand this timeline war? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're constantly shifting uh, scenarios due to the timeline war. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, the NPCs, the non-player characters, the soulless clones, I don't want to call them clones, the, the, people, the background people, 
well, they're agents of the future. They're a, they're they're sent into the past in order to um, hinder the the uh, progress of the light warriors that are winning the war in the future. Does that make sense? So they're yes. sent to the past, but then at the same time, versions of ourselves are sent from the future into the present in order to counteract that at the same time. So it is some sort of a chess game, you could say, that has been going on. Um, and to give you an example, uh, CERN. CERN is obviously was an attempt by the uh, negative AI timeline to, um, you know, um, secure the the victory of the AI inorganic timeline. And of course, uh, it was unsuccessful due to the fact that the humans in the future, which is us, once we fully activate our dormant DNA, when we do become these angelic, powerful beings, we actually came back from the past, I mean, from the future into the present in order to counteract every attempt made by the AI of the future through CERN in order to secure the positive timeline. So that explains why we can only give time frames. We can't give, oh, on this exact date, this is going to happen, or on this exact date. Because like my brother Soren here say, things are constantly fluctuating due to the timeline wars. Which is very important for all of us to understand, especially in the community that is, you know, ascending because people get sometimes disheartened because they get too invested within the date or the moment or they lose patience or they lose, you know, persistency. And, and you know, so sometimes I speak to people, they're like, oh my God, when is this going to happen? But you know, what I'm saying, and this is the reason why I'm asking this question, is because it's very important for us to understand it. For example, in Star Trek, they have this multidimensional chess game and you play on all different levels simultaneously at the same time. So you move the chess, the, the, the player on the fifth dimensional reality, something happens on the third dimensional reality at the same time. So it's very interesting for us to understand it, even though it's beyond our comprehension of time at this moment in, in our evolution. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Because, you know, the, the timeline war is actually taking place in the 11th dimension. Because mm -hmm. that's where this this AI menace, which what um, the regressive negative aliens call the AI God, that's mm -hmm. where that uh, entity currently exists. So some of us, um, after the ascension, uh, are able to advance all the way to the twelfth dimension. And the reason we beat him is because we are one dimension ahead of him, because mm -hmm. he he was stuck in the eleventh dimension. Mm -hmm. So that's where uh, you could say, and, and also as we go higher in dimensions in in higher you know levels of, of of realities um it's also uh parallel to to the future so right now here in the bottom of the spectrum in the third dimension out of the fifth dimensional time matrix in which we exist in we could say that we are currently in the bottom of the like in the past right so both the past right where everything began in the higher realms right through the process of descent which i reveal in my book through involution that was also, in a sense, the past and the future are one and the same. Then mm -hmm. here at the hub, the hub is pretty much the, how can I say it? What happens here will determine what happens. Yes. You know, it's going to either, it's going to change everything in the past, uh, and it's going to also alternate everything in the future. But yeah, we came from the future into the present, and we're heading back to the future as we move up in dimensions, in other words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, it's very clear. <laughs> so we wanted to talk a little bit just about AI because in the current reality right now, what's going on, and this is why people also get discarded because this old AI bots and chats, everything is kind of emerging. And we see from a lot of people deep enthusiasm, you know, because the AI right now can write the poem, it can write the blog for you, it can write the post, it can, you know, do your work basically. So it's kind of creeping in at this moment in time, and it's getting bigger and bigger, bigger, especially in the month of February and March 2023. So any comments on that? How do you see that emergence of the AI within our reality? Well, I, I've been predicting that this was going to happen for a couple of years. Now. Ever since I came into the scene, I've been talking about how eventually AI would emerge all of a sudden everywhere. Um, and it's part of the inorganic timeline. It's part of the negative timeline, by the way. Mm -hmm. So through five golf, through CERN and through, um, the metaverse, you could say, mm -hmm. uh, they're already creating a further simulation that is going to entrap people in this inorganic AI timeline. So, mm -hmm. um, if that also correlates with the sudden emergence or 
the sudden um, advertising of smart cities, right? The 15 minute cities, all of a sudden we're seeing them advertising smart cities all through Europe, yeah. Australia, Canada, mm -hmm. the Western world, of course. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing the sudden emergence of this AI technocratic dystopia that we're seeing the beginning stages of it, you know? So what they, what they used to call agenda 45, mm -hmm. which is the uh, technological singularity, right? Hooking everybody to the Borg, AI advances uh, at a higher uh, level of intelligence and humanity, was fast forward to 2025 by 20 years, which means that we are already there at the bifurcation of timelines. So people need to start making the choice. And how do they make the choice? Where they choose to put their focus and their emotional state of mind as well, their emotional state of being. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's uh, how they make the choice. So there's going to be, again, the portals are going to be opening up and those that make the shift, like the Bible says, they're just going to suddenly disappear from those that didn't make the shift. You know, again, I, I, I hate using the word rapture, harvest, mm -hmm. but you could interpret these terminologies as they apply to what is about to happen during the bifurcation of time. You know, it has nothing to do with an external savior because after all, you know, the solar flash is an inside job and many people are already doing that by what by reaching that zero point through the healing process through the shadow work right zero point no more polarity once because enough people are doing that they are collapsing the duality within themselves and reaching zero point where there is no duality there is no good or bad it's they're making it manifest for everyone else and then that's what's going to trigger the external flash Mm -hmm. so, so we have to do we have to do the inner work in order for Absolutely. us to trigger the outer yeah 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 Absolutely. yeah so there is no external savior guys we all have you know we are the saviors <laughs> and it's beautiful explanation Vivian. i'm passing on to you for a second that you know unification from within and being able to reach the zero point by collapsing the polarity inside of yourself by working with your shadow and light and achieving that so that we can then serve as a catalyst in the collective consciousness to call in uh, solar flash, flash to come and activate everybody else. I think it's a beautiful metaphor or reality that we all have to do the work. <laughs> exactly, my brother. Mm -hmm. That's Vivian. Yeah. So I had this visceral reaction to stuff like chat GBT and um, I think there's a new one called Jasper or something. What was the name of that one, Zoran? Jasper. Jasper, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's a very cute name. Come on, Vivian. I mean, it, it just a visceral reaction of, oh, God, no, no. And um, it nauseates me. Am I, am I overreacting to it? Yeah, you because know, I kind of associate, it, I associate all things AI with what you've been describing, negative forces who seek to control and enslave and keep, rather, humanity enslaved. Is that an overreaction? Are these you know, little manifestations of these convenient little things um, um, something that we need to reject? Or is it something that we should be embracing as something? Because a lot of people, and I see it, I understand why, I think this is going to enhance our ability to be creative, for example. I, I, I don't see it like that, but I, I'm wondering what you think. Well, you know, people that are pro AI are actually falling into the trap. And unfortunately for them, they will end up in the, in the metaverse. The metaverse is this further digital simulation that is being created by big tech, including Mr. Musk, unfortunately, Neuralink, not a good thing, but, um, it seems like big tech has been hypnotized and under the control of this negative alien AI. Because again, it's, it's not about the AI system that we are currently building, but it's about the AI system that infiltrated us. And it does it through in, through infiltration, by the way. See, it's so advanced that it no longer just takes over externally. It does it through what? By gradually converting the natural organic genetics through the RNA DNA modification plant, right? Which is in progress. Um, oh, by the way, which um, has a lot to do with taking out the weak and only modifying the strong, and that explains why all of a sudden there's sudden adult death syndrome taking place all around the world, right? People are falling, people are collapsing. Yeah. Uh, 
do sudden heart attacks. Well, it's already happening. It's part of getting rid of the weak in order to modify the strong in order to uh, keep the strong and alter them into the inorganic metaverse digital reality that unfortunately for those that are pushing that agenda for those that believe in that well you know the ai works much better than i do you know they they have no clue they have no clue exactly. they're completely yeah exactly it's almost like they're it, it's it's like uh they're, they're walking into the slaughterhouse without even knowing that they're about to yeah. be butchered yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. These things that make us human, our ability to create, the things that have our soul, our creation, our writing, our painting, our singing, our music. Maybe AI can technically, technically churn out stuff a lot quicker that looks good, looks good. But it has no soul. It's that, it's Luciferian. That's how I feel it. That's how I feel it. And I fear that if we fall into that trap, the day will come up when I'll be looking at you and I won't even know if it's you. I won't be able to tell. Only my heart will know. Is that Ismail? Is he really saying that? And only my heart will know. There'll be no, and I, and I wouldn't be able to explain it to anybody why no, that's not Ismail. And he's not saying what he would say. And they'll say, but it is him. It's the same person. Only your heart knows. And that we'll find ourselves very quick. You're right. It's happening so quickly every day. I see another example of it creeping in this insidious seeping into our lives and making us feel oh this is a good thing it's going to help us you know a bit like digital id but it'll be great i'll have all my stuff in one place you know everything will be there and i won't have to have all these passwords and wherever i go will be allowed and i have nothing to hide i'm not a criminal why would i like that where do you even begin to explain the danger that this poses to us as humanity it's the ultimate tyranny it's the ultimate tyranny and people are asleep. The majority, I'd say about 80% of the population, unfortunately. But that's that's really why, Vivian, you have visceral reaction to all of this because you're representative of humanity, so you understand what it is for humanity. And, and you know, but as we talked in the previous podcast, you know, there needs to be a percentage of humanity that wakes up. Uh, and that percentage of humanity that wakes up will make sure that the whole collective consciousness awakens. I'm, I believe in that. I believe in Maharaji effect. I believe in Hundred Monkeys effect as well. And I think that once with enough people really hold the line and they're unshakable towards the organic timeline, we will be able to pull people who are out of the convenience, you know, because that's the thing, out of the comfort saying, well, you know, today I'm just going, not going to work. I'm going to delegate everything to AI and, and do nothing, you know? Yeah. It is, it is, it is our humanity's challenge because we are creatures of comfort and, you know, habits and stuff like that. And we don't like to struggle, you know what I mean? And what Ishmael was saying, we're not fully activated with our dormant DNA. So we don't have superpowers to be able to multitask on the level that is necessary for us in order to live the most amazing lives. So that will come up, right? We will be eventually getting into that space when we can do m more than the AI can ever think about, correct? Absolutely. Because... In our DNA, and this is a gift from the cosmos, as the most advanced hybridized uh, specimen in the omniverse, uh, we have been given the most advanced quantum organic sophisticated vehicle, which will allow us to do everything that all the galactics are doing, but with technology, without the technology. They, they use technology. We're going to be the, our own technology. When's, when that dormant DNA activates, we are going to be doing things that others in the galaxy and the cosmos do with technology, but better. Yeah. That's the difference. Yes, so, and that's another lie they sold us, that we we are less, there's more advanced out there. No, we, I, I, I completely feel that. I don't, it's not something I believe because my intellect, it's not intellectual, it's a feeling that we are far more advanced than we realize we are. And we've been lied to about that and that's been suppressed in us because it would make us so powerful and we would could not be controlled and enslaved. Exactly. Yep. That's the key right there. And it's there our humanity. Day. And that's why AI seeks to take that away from us. Our connection, everything that makes us human, our gender, our, our love, our creativity, everything that makes us human is what it fears the most. And that is what we are in danger of giving up because it's so convenient to use AI, the creative stuff. So convenient to have a digital, all of this stuff will eventually be the end of us if we let it happen. Oh, no.
but not only the end of us, but since we are the hope of the multiverse, right? Since the entire cosmos has been dealing, has been plagued with this AI in many universes, yeah. um, the entire organic multiverse is at stake here if, if we don't activate our dormant DNA. So it, it's beyond us, Viviana. It's beyond us. You know, so after all, we are the saviors of all that is. Our and time. every choice we make, every day, every minute of every day, every thought that we have, every action we take, every choice that we make matters. Yeah, absolutely. So I know that all of this matters. I would love to ask, you know, an important question here. So this activation of the dormant DNA that we're all looking forward to initiate, I suppose, from inside out. When I talk to people, they think that this will happen as a result of the solar flesh. You know, solar flesh will come and then when it enters into our energetic and physical, emotional, spiritual bodies, it will start the process. Is that correct? Or do we have an ability to tune into ourselves and initiate this process ourselves with the, under with the awareness that we know that we need to go through this process? What would you say on that? It's both, my friend, and it's a process that it's already happening. At the cellular molecular level of our genetic blueprint, we're already mutating. The solar flash is just going to um, complete it. Mm. At that point, we're gonna, our bodies are going to shift. They're going to change from um, carbon-based molecular structure to uh, crystalline-based molecular structure. So we will be like the, the angels. And that's the difference between humans and angels. Angels are, no, are extraterrestrials that have crystalline uh, molecular structure genetics and so we're going to become like them but more powerful you know even the bible says we're going to be more powerful than the angels that came before us yeah beautiful to believe that beautiful to know that from inside out and beautiful to empower people to stay on that you know journey because i think now if you go backwards to the beginning of this recording i know we need to wrap up because Ishma needs to go it's an important time and we have to hold the line on a certain level. And, and, you know, sometimes when I talk to the friends or colleagues or people who are within this community, they fluctuate, they keep on losing faith. Sometimes they're like, but when, when, but how, but when, you know, now look at this and now look at that. Exactly Vivian, what you said, you know, what we're seeing in the external world right now can be frightening and then people can lose the faith. So. What I would love to end up with, it's, it's to empower people to, to keep the line, to really go deep within, to do the necessary transformation in the work that, that we all have to do, and to keep the positive timeline forward, 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 until we activate enough of a collective human consciousness to, to reach the ascension point. Yeah. Yeah, hold the line and trust. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, anything stay anything well, how would you like to wrap up uh, besides this? The best thing to do is uh, spend at least 20 to 30 minutes a day in nature, whether it's a mountain, a river, a sea, an ocean, the beach, wherever there is Mother Earth, you know, um, wherever there are the elements, you know, make sure that you connect daily with the elements because that is also part of activating the dormant DNA and mm -hmm. connecting with Mother Earth. And again, for those that haven't gotten my second edition, I do add, I added a different chapter, a new chapter that reveals what happens after the ascension. It's very prophetic, very prophetic. And then, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and give you guys the link. That's yeah. wonderful. Thanks, you, Kyle. We cannot wait to read that new one. Thank you, Ishmael, so much for joining in. Good luck with your endeavors. We love you. We cherish you. Thank you for your encouragement, for your energy, for being who you are, and, and for, you know, sharing this wonderful information. And, and we are very grateful, and our audience is grateful as well. Vivian, anything you would love to say as goodbye to everybody, because you were on the go today. So let's, let's end with your statement. Peace and love and happiness, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Peace and love, yeah. Thank you, Ishmael. Bye for now. Bye for Bye. now. <laughs>